2023 was one of the most exciting years for space exploration. More people were in space at the same time than ever before. The number of space tourism flights also took off, and India became the fourth country to successfully soft land on the moon. That is to name just a few highlights. 2024 is said to be just as exciting, and here is what's in store. One of the most highly anticipated events on the 2024 space calendar is the Artemis II mission. In November, it's slated to send these four astronauts, seen here at a launch demonstration event, on a 10-day lunar flyby. It'll be the final test mission before Artemis III sends humans back to the surface of the moon in 2025, for the first time in over half a century. The milestone program, led by NASA, involves six other space agencies, including Europe's ESA. It's also a stepping stone to bigger things. There is uh, certainly a good reason on one side, of course, technology has advanced uh, and we are exploring again uh, the universe. That means we, uh, we send astronauts uh, outside our uh, space station, our low Earth orbit. Um, and the moon is the obvious next uh, stop uh, on the way to Mars. Uh. India's successful Chandrayaan mission to the moon's south pole was just the first to an area where water has been detected. NASA's soil sample prospector Viper will head there next. And in May, China also plans to launch the Chang'e 6, a robotic exploration mission that, like its predecessor, the Chang'e 5, is designed to return samples of lunar soil and rock to Earth for the first time from the moon's far side. Visits to other moons in the solar system, like one that circles Mars, are also on the agenda in 2024. In September, Japan's space agency JAXA is heading to Phobos with a mission that will seek to collect a few grams of material from the red planet's larger moon. The following month will see the launch towards Jupiter of NASA's Europa Clipper mission. It'll try to pinpoint possible future landing sites on the Jovian satellite's surface and also gather data on its icy outer shell and the ocean suspected beneath it. Trips to asteroids are also planned for 2024. ESA's HERA mission will look at the two asteroids Didymos and Dimorphos. Back in 2022, NASA's DART spacecraft intentionally slammed into Dimorphos. That was a feasibility study into whether it's possible to deflect the course of near-Earth objects. With the aid of two helper satellites, HERA will examine the asteroid and nearby space in the aftermath of the DART collision. I mean, HERA is, is really a, a mission that focuses on planetary safety. That means uh, protecting our planet for objects that, that might hit our planet. And this is what uh, HERA will do because HERA is looking at the impact which the NASA DART mission had on uh, these asteroids and uh, see how, the, how this was affected. The moon looms large for every spacefaring nation in 2024, but it's just one destination in one of the most exciting years ever for space exploration. Let's bring in Keith Cowing. He's editor of NASAWatch.com in Washington, D.C. Keith, good to see you again. We just heard our reporter call 2024 one of the most exciting years ever in space exploration. Do you agree? Yeah, and that gets part of the excitement out of the way. There's so much more. And uh, I don't know where to start almost. Uh, we're going to go back to the moon. Uh, there's private missions that are going to land there. I actually have a connection to one of them. One of them's taking a piece of summit of Mount Everest from Nepal back to the moon, and it was inspired by a trip I went on to Everest with an astronaut friend of mine back in the day. We brought some rocks back on the space station. So Nepal is sending something to the moon. That's how, you know, it's become so exciting now that it's not just the big country here, a big country there. It's smaller groups of people in more diverse places that are getting to participate. And so that, to me, is the most exciting thing. 
I think the, mo the second most exciting thing is what was touched on was the Europa Clipper mission. Uh, ESA already has the JUICE mission going to the J Jupiter system. And astrobiology, the search for life, is one of the more important things. You've got the James Webb Space Telescope, which wasn't mentioned, which is looking at places uh, far across the universe and close by in ways we've never been able to look for at, at things before. And um, among the things we see is the chemistry of all these worlds. And a lot of it is like, to me as a biologist, Interesting. Let's see more. Then you have commercial space. You have uh, the Starship that uh, they tried to launch twice last year. Hopefully it'll make orbit this year. You've got uh, a, a winged spacecraft called Dream Chaser that's going to go to the space station, which, by the way, the space station's been occupied for 25 years. Oh, and when you look at the videos from the space station, it's hard to tell which one you're looking at because there's now two. China has one and we have one. You know, I could just go on. So maybe yeah. I should <laughs> let you ask me another question. <laughs> which mission do you think will be most consequential for us back on Earth? I think, and unfortunately, I'll be kind of old when it gets there, but those two missions to Jupiter, because they're going to look at Europa and Ganymede and so forth. And that's really the big question. I mean, for me, at least, uh, having been watching this for years, I'd like to say that going back to the moon is going to be it, but it's frustrating. I was 14 when I watched the Apollo 11 land. I'm 68 now. I, it, it should be quicker to do, but it's not. And pick a reason why. But when we do that, when we see people walking on the moon again, just remember, I don't know if you were, I don't think you were alive at the time, but three quarters of the people on this world have never seen another person walk in another world. So this is going to be like doing the same thing again for the first time. And that, you know, for most people, that'll be exciting. So I should just sit back and be quiet and say, yeah, that's cool too. A lot of people want to get involved in this excitement and a lot of nations are getting into space exploration. Now, that creates a lot of competition. Do you think there should be more international cooperation to help us advance more quickly? Yes. And, you know, the interesting thing is when I was growing up, it was a bipolar world. It was either the East or the West. And then Europe got in on it. And then Japan. Now, like I said, Nepal is a player. The United Arab Emirates has a spacecraft that's doing amazing stuff in orbit around Mars. I mean, it, it, companies now have the financial resources to go wherever their rich owner wants to go. And these rich owners have read a lot of science fiction. And a lot of that science fiction talks about a lot of people going to a lot of places. So my answer is yes. And I think part of it is also that satellites are smaller now. They're cheaper. You've got the ability now to have people in the smallest village on Earth to pick up a cell phone and have a Wi-Fi and talk to some one somewhere else and also to learn about how to go to space. Yeah. So we're just on the on the cusp of seeing what it's like when everybody everywhere can have a, 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 a role to play in space if they want to. That to me, of all the other things, just having everybody involved is the most exciting thing. Keith Cowling, always great speaking to you. Thank you so much.